Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter, and today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about using these old manual Nikkor lenses, so stay tuned. Easily the most asked question I get um, on the site and through email and on Facebook and Twitter is what lens should I get and there's there's so much that goes into that question I'm working on a pretty extensive post to kind of break all that down to help people out it usually comes down to some either they need a zoom lens or a prime and that that's one of the bigger questions once you get past that once you think about primes a lot of people are, um, are only thinking Canon lenses but there's a host of stuff out there. You guys remember we did the FD lenses uh, episode a while ago. And those are cool lenses, but they really were designed for a different kind of camera. So it requires a special adapter that has, you know, a little lens in it, which means we're getting a softer image. But a great option, whether you have a little bit of money that you can spend on lenses or if you have almost no budget, are these manual Nikkor lenses. So in today's episodes, we're gonna cover all things on these Nikkor lenses. We're gonna cover what the lenses are, what different types of Nikkor manual lenses there are, how to use them with your camera, what the benefits are to using these over other lenses, and we're also gonna cover where you can find these lenses and how to make sure you're getting good quality ones, as well as how to customize these for video use specifically. So we're gonna cover all that today, and uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. So these lenses have been around for a long time. They were uh, manufactured at first in the 1960s and all the way up to uh, present day you can get electronic Nikkor lenses, but the manual ones went up to about the, the 90s. And uh, there's really three kinds of manual Nikkor lenses. And you may have seen this before when you're scouring eBay for, for lenses and whatnot. And that's uh, non-AI, AI, and AIS. And essentially what those are, are ways to identify the different styles of Nikkor lenses. Non-AI lenses, those were developed and um, primarily dominant from 1959 to 1977. And they're, they're, they're the oldest and uh, they don't have, and the reason they're called non-AI is that AI stands for auto indexing, um, which is essentially information that the lens is telling um, the camera with mechanics. So they're, they won't work with a lot of modern day Nikon cameras. So if you are shooting with like the D7000, um, go to the website and check out a link I have there and uh, somebody has put together a great list uh, telling you which lenses will not work with which bodies. So that's really handy if you're a Nikon shooter, uh, but they do work great with, with Canon cameras and other camera systems. The AI, those were from the 1970s all the way through the 80s and the AI stands for auto indexing. Um, and then the more modern AIS came out and that's Aperture Indexing Shutter. And those uh, came about around 82. And those are the newest of the manual lenses. And pretty much when you look at all three types, non-AI to AIS, the non-AI is gonna be the most affordable lens. So like right here, this is a 50 millimeter uh, F1.4 non-AI. And uh, you can pick this up depending on the quality and the uh, condition it's in, anywhere from $40 to $150. Um, so that, that's a great way to get into the game if you have almost no glass and you're getting started. So the non-AI is the cheapest, AI is gonna be a little more expensive, and the AIS is gonna be the most expensive out of those three types. So depending on your budget, you may wanna consider um, starting with the non-AI if you don't have a lot of uh, money that you can invest in lenses. What's great is these resell really well. Um, so if let's say down the road you wanna move from a whole set of non-AIs up to AIS, you can do that. And that's actually what I did. I had a couple of these really old lenses and they were awesome, used them for a long time, uh, but eventually ended up selling them slowly and then purchasing the AIS. The biggest difference is, is the actual sharpness of the image. So like this 50 millimeter at F1.4, it's a little soft and I'll show you guys a comparison between this 51.4 
and a newer AIS 51.4. And you can be the judge of, you know, the softness there. So you are getting a little better uh, image when you use the AIS lenses, but for the price, you just cannot beat these, these really old non-AIs. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to adapt these to whatever camera system you're using. Now, for almost every single lens, I've been using the Photo Deox um, adapter and uh, they've changed it over the years a little bit, but it's, it seems to be working on the largest range of Nikkor lenses. Uh, one time I had an issue where I couldn't use their adapter on a lens, and so I bought a Cinevate uh, Nikkor two Canon adapter, and that worked. So if this one doesn't work for one or two lenses, check out the Cinevate ones. I'll have links to all that stuff on the website. You can find it there. Um, but we're going to be using the uh, Photo Deox ones for today. And I'm going to show you guys how I adapt to Canon. The same thing goes for if you're using this on a um, Sony or a Panasonic like a GH2. So uh, there's a couple little tips and tricks to make sure you're getting the most out of that adapter. I don't buy the super expensive adapters. There's ones out there and they're making the claim that you know there's zero wiggle and you're somehow going to have better focus out of it. I do not think an adapter is worth whatever they're charging for some of those, which can be up to $200. Um, for under 30, you can pick up um, just a solid metal one. They work great. I'm gonna show you how to get that wiggle out if there is a wiggle um, in your adapter to your lens. And they work, they've worked really well for me. And I do buy one for every single lens. Um, you could just buy one and put it from lens to lens, but if you're gonna get more than one Nikkor lens, it's really annoying to having to have to take that off every single time, especially if you're gonna um, add something in between the lens and the adapter and make sure there's no wiggle. So they're so cheap, I just recommend getting one for every single lens. And then it's just like having a Canon lens. You just throw it in your bag and you, you can buy Canon caps like this and put it on the back of the Nikkor lens and uh, then you're, you're good to go and, and it's so much faster on set. Okay, so here we have a Nikkor lens, and over here I have the adapter. This is the Nikon to ES adapter by Photo Deox. Um, you'll notice on the adapter there are three um, inset sections here, and on the lens there are those matching three uh, flanges or um, portions of the, the rear mount. And so it's pretty simple, the, the one gouge that has the mechanism to release the adapter that's got the largest um, inset there so all we're gonna do is figure out which one um, and each of those three grooves are different sizes so there's only one way to put this on you can't put it on the wrong way once you get it in there you just rotate it it locks and on this um, it, every lens is gonna be a little different but uh, you can probably hear that this uh, adapter's loose on this lens, and that's really annoying when you're trying to focus, so we're gonna take this back off. And my solution to, to that problem of the loose adapter is pretty simple, and um, I'd love to hear what you guys do, but what's worked well for me is just cutting a tiny piece, a sliver actually, of um, uh, paper, and this is actually like a folder, like a cream folder, and I just set that right up on the back of the, um, the lens. And I take my adapter and I put it back on. And I go ahead and reposition it. And I tighten it down. And then that puppy is rock solid tight. Um, that's not going anywhere, that just fits in there. Uh, and that, <laughs> that seems to work really well. Um, I'm sure there's other materials you could use, but that seems to be the perfect thickness to make sure it's a nice, tight, snug fit. These lenses are really great. Um, 
there's so many reasons why I prefer them over other lenses, especially the AIS um, types. And um, I guess if you had to break all that down, there'd be a couple things. First of all, they're manual. What I love about having a whole set of these is I can use these lenses on almost any camera system in the world. So I could get them on an Epic, a Scarlett, Panasonic AF100, GH2, Sony FS100. I'm using one right now to film this on the Sony NEX5N uh, on a Canon DSLRs. I mean, there's really, um, the mount is so versatile that you can get an adapter to anything. And because they're manual, you only need a uh, metal adapter. You don't have to buy an electronic adapter like you would if you wanted to use your Canon lenses on certain things. And you can use them on Nikon cameras, and that's the other thing, is you can't use Canon lenses on Nikons. So for that, just having that, you know, knowing that if you bought a whole Prime set, you could use those on any camera system, is really good to know and a solid investment because of that. Another reason is the mechanics of these lenses. Um, if you buy some, some of the nicer ones, um, the, the, the focus rings are beautiful and a lot of the Canon, you know, if anyone's owned the 50 F1.4 or even the F1.8, um, you feel the motor in there when you try to focus the lens. It's choppy and you barely have to turn it to go from uh, back focus to infinity. So these things have nice long um, uh, focus poles. They do have hard stops on the end so you can hear that when you get to the end it actually clicks and stops, whereas the Canon lenses keep going and going and going. I think that's a benefit. Um, so there's, there's, and they're really small, so they don't take up a lot of room. And that's, like, this is a 51.4, thing's tiny. Um, they do get bigger as you, you know, go longer, obviously, and faster. But uh, they're, they're very small, very nimble, and uh, you can put a huge set of these in a small bag, and you're good to go. The other reason these lenses are so great is there's so many of them. There's so many different types. There's so many different focal lengths with different speeds. So it's really cool as I've been looking for lenses, uh, Nikkor lenses, um, discovering these other lenses. Like right now, my favorite lens is a 28 millimeter F2. So you get a very fast, wide lens and the minimum distance is incredibly close so I can get the lens is very very close to the subject and uh, it's, it's, it's I love that lens and the, the color is great in all these lenses but you really can't beat the price for the quality that you can find in these old lenses so now I want to show you guys how you can actually find these lenses and make sure that you get ones in decent condition um, I buy all of my Nikkor lenses from Kaya.com, that's K-E-H.com, and they have a very strict rating system that they rate all of their lenses. So that way you can kind of tell, you know, what you're getting into, and it's not like eBay where you're kind of trusting via pictures, and when you get the thing, it may not be what the guy originally described. So, so I buy all my stuff from Kaya.com, and there's two ratings that I'll buy within. Um, Excellent, which is the little EX, and usually those are killer. I mean, they're, the, the, they operate smoothly, the image is phenomenal, they look super clean, and that, those are great. But I've bought a lot of my lenses at the bargain level, which uh, means that the image you're gonna get is fine. There's nothing wrong with the glass, but it may not be as smooth a focus ring, or the aperture ring might be a little dirty, and there's a few more nicks on it. Um, but a lot of the lenses that I've bought, you know, they're at they're at the bargain level, and they've they've worked really well for me. So that's again, you know, if you, if you want to save even more money, look at the bargain lenses. Um, and you can always send them back. They have great uh, a great return system. So if you're not uh, if you're not happy with the quality level of the lens, you can always send it back and get a different one. All right, so we're back at the table and I wanna show you guys what I do to each of my lenses to kinda of get them a little more tuned up for video use. Uh, we already have the adapter here. Uh, the first thing you're gonna notice is the lens gear and I use these little zip tie lens gears. You can get these from wideopencamera.com. I'll have links to all this stuff on dslrvideoshooter.com. 
and uh, just attaches via zip tie. And these things are aesthetically pleasing. They're, they don't take up a ton of space. Some people like the larger ones because their follow focus can't get close enough to the lens. Uh, these have worked well for me personally. And because the travel of the ring is so long that I don't really see a need for a giant uh, focus ring on these. So that's that. Um, and the next thing I do is, you know, you're definitely going to want to get rear caps. And now that you have a Canon uh, rear mount, now you can just put on Canon caps. So you can pick these up by the bulk as well. Um, so I get that. Now we have the rear of the lens protected. And because I'm using um, a fader ND on uh, all these lenses, I like to have the same lens or lens uh, filter diameter. And what's cool is almost every single one of these manual Nikkor lenses have a 52 millimeter uh, filter thread. And uh, granted, there's a few that will have larger because they just can't accommodate that size. Uh, so you can almost just buy a whole bunch of these. These are the 52 to 77 or whatever size you need. And you can just uh, thread those on there. And that's gonna give you the same um, filter ring size on all of your lenses. It also gives you a little protection um, from you know the front and the sides. And then finally, I get a bunch of these caps. They have a nice spot in the middle so I can label them. So uh, when this thing is sitting in a bag, I can see what I'm working with uh, focal length wise. And there you go. You have a, a fully ready to roll uh, prime and you do this the whole bunch and then you know your your kit can change but your lenses are all ready to go for video so that's a look at using manual Nikkor lenses and uh, getting it on your DSLR or other mount um, and using them for video I hope you enjoy this podcast let me know if you have any questions you can send an email to me or just comment on the site for more DSLR content definitely check out DSLRvideoshooter.com and I look forward to talking to you guys over there